Hi, Guillaume. I heard you help companies move to the cloud. Hi, Martin. Yes, I work for Accenture with a Google Cloud partner company. We help businesses move to the cloud, including serverless. I have helped many businesses make the move. Great. Uh, could you tell us what you've learned about successful cloud migrations? Yeah, I will be happy to. All right. So in your experience, what kind of businesses want to move to the cloud? Oh, most of them. They don't want to buy more servers for their data centers. Servers in the cloud are cheaper when you take into account all the management costs. Plug the new servers, unplug the oldest one, destroy the disk, ensure the site physical security. Stephanie has released a great video on the Google Cloud data center security, and it's harder than you think. Oh yeah, that's a really good video. You know, I remember putting servers into racks for one of my startups back in the day. Uh, our data center was in San Mateo, California. Yeah, that's fine. But you may need one data center in Europe, one in Asia, one in North America, and so on. Laws about data storage may force you to do that. Or you may want your servers close to your users to reduce latency. This means it's hard to go global. With cloud, you get that for free. But there are also challenges. In my experience, when a business migrates to the cloud, they face three major challenges. Oh, uh, what are those three challenges? First of all, security. The security teams in most businesses want to make sure that their internal system cannot be accessed from the public internet. That's usually how their existing on-prem environment works. Okay, that sounds reasonable. Uh, how do you help them with that? Uh, two things. First, I like to remove the virtual machines public IPs and to put all the VMs behind load balancers. So the VMs are, are not directly visible to the public internet. Second, I help them set up organization policies. This means that new VMs cannot get public IPs without an exception to the policy. I see. Uh, so that's for virtual machines. Uh, what about security for serverless? Uh, serverless is a new paradigm. Many serverless products have public IPs by default. So they base their security on Cloud IAM instead. And many security teams are uncomfortable with that. And how do you deal with that? Oh, I explain this new paradigm and how we can help them implement zero trust. This means that you don't trust incoming traffic just because it's from your internal network. You check all traffic and trust the identity in addition of the origin. So you said uh, there were three challenges. Uh, what's the second one? Um, the second is cost uncertainty. It's hard to estimate how much your cloud system will cost when it's exposed to real workload and traffic. Oh, yeah, I've heard that from developers too. Uh, and uh, what's your solution? I'll tell all customers set up alerts on budget, roughly estimated with a cost calculator. That way, they get an email if their cloud bill goes above a certain threshold. However, many of my customers have gone serverless. That's magic for them, that scale up and down automatically, but they have also the feeling of losing control of cost. Right, and what can be done about that? Um, in Cloud Run, you can set the maximum number of instances. So, for example, regardless of traffic, they will never pay for more than 10 Cloud Run instances. And you can put these limits on several other serverless products, like Dataflow or BigQuery. Got it. And what's the third challenge you've seen businesses run into when, when they migrate to the cloud? Yeah, the third one is trust. Everyone at the customer has to trust the cloud provider. It's easy when your system are in your own data centers. You trust your own servers, high drives, monitoring systems, and when you know the teams in charge of your data centers. And how do you address that trust challenge? Businesses have to ask themselves, can my cloud provider handle server better than I can, or as well as me, but for less? Yeah, uh, that's why businesses want to move to the cloud in the first place, right? Right, right. 
smart companies want to delegate IT to a cloud provider to save money and to be more efficient. They want to focus their teams and money on their core business. But it takes time to gain trust. And it's not a matter of company size or move to cloud budget. It depends more on how well the system is. The older it is, the harder it will be to gain confidence in the cloud. One good way is to run a pilot project to migrate one small non-critical system to the cloud. And when your customers run these pilot projects, how does it usually work out? <laughs> in fact, most of them want to be cloud native, to use only managed and serverless products or to use containers and Kubernetes. However, it's a big step to train the teams in serverless or Kubernetes. You need many small steps before that, like setting up your CI/CD pipeline and putting your applications in container. CI/CD pipelines and containers, th those are big topics. Uh, how can they get started? I tell them to start by performing a lift and shift migration. Move one of their existing applications as is to the cloud. As they do that, they learn what works well in the cloud. And they are in a better place with an existing app to set up CI/CD and modernize with serverless or Kubernetes. And why should they start using CI/CD and serverless or Kubernetes? Oh, they can ship code faster, reduce human errors, and optimize cost. Dora and the Google Cloud White Paper describe uh, the return on investment of DevOps transformation and how to do it. Have a look at it. Sounds good. Uh, thanks for sharing your hard-won experience with us today, Guillaume. If you have any questions for Guillaume or me, please enter them in the comments below. Also, please let me know if there are any other topics you'd like us to bring up on the show. Until next time. Mm -hmm.